What's going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Odd Chopper channel coming to with another edition of Wendy's Lines, Likes, Locks. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. I go Southern? I don't know. That way, you become a president of our great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. Skull, first of all, hopefully, when you hear this video, because the game will be over, the Minnesota Vikings are winners. We shall find out. We shall find out. Uh, first quarter, just nothingness. Justin Fields, great first drive, stalled out. Hopefully, that continues here when I turn the TV back on. But we're going to fly through this one. Again, got some great information here. I'm actually going to be jumping over to LA, and then I'm jumping to Las Vegas. And it's going to be a crazy couple of days here for me, but very excited to be bringing you BetMGM, as well as the Odd Trapper tools that got revamped. And yeah, everything is going great here, friends. Going to be awesome, awesome stuff for you in the Odd Chopper streets, mainly because... Well, we've slashed prices across the board here. And yes, the Black Friday promotion is now officially done. Wah, wah, wah. But guess what? The Discord itself was $20 per week leading into this. And uh, pretty sure everybody in the premium Discord over the course of any long-term sample size is pretty darn happy. Well, we changed that from $20 to $15. And then we also added the Odd Shopper Tools. Check this out. $14.95 for a weekly, $49.95 for the monthly awesome great stuff here odd shopper happy to be bringing this to you again the tool is doing the work for you it's a market-based approach and again that is what i'm here to teach you that is what i'm here to help instill in you and yes stochastic i do my projections i do all of the other great things here and it all gets a bow put on it because again books they're pretty good at projecting them so why don't you compare them to each other again it's odd shopper for a reason you compare books across multiple multiple places and then you make sure that you get the best line every single day. And that's why we talk about BetMGM and all these other places that you want to be involved in. And yes, $14.95 now for the weekly, $49.95 for the monthly. And also, when I'm in LA and kicking it, doing whatever else, you got the amazing pick em portfolio too for the prize picks, for the underdog, for everything there. You have the fantasy optimizer at your disposal. So again, so many great tools for the OS Premium Tools, all of that, in addition to the Discord for just $14.95 per week now. So happy to be bringing to this, this to you with more people in the Discord, with more opportunity to make money at a lower price than it was at before, exponentially for the monthly. That is for sure, friends. So check it all out, shall you? Cool. Sounds great. Let's get ourselves to the picks. Uh, don't really have anything else to add other than I'm going to see producer Jacob probably on Friday, and that makes my heart happy. He has his camera off. He doesn't care. Sounds great. Producer Jacob, let's get to the picks. Producer Jacob doesn't love me. He doesn't care that I'm going to be waking up in Vegas. Go Ducks. Sco Ducks. Also, kind of cool that my mother-in-law and I are going to a football game together, but that's a different conversation for a different podcast. One where I'm like, oh, I'm going through the emotional tidbits and look at me. I'm a real person living my life in the world and a... I, I think Chicago fans could be using a little bit of podcasts like that because they need some pick-me-ups on the daily considering their team is 11 and a half point dogs to Boston. And that should just kind of show you where we're at here with this Boston team. I love Dunks and Threes. You should be going to dunksandthrees.com all the time. That's where I do a lot of my pace modeling. That's where I do a lot of my offensive defensive rating modeling. And then, well, they have every single player listed. You can look at everybody's EPM and you can really get an idea of, well, Am I looking at things correctly? I also use addmorefunds.com. I put it all together in a lovely portfolio, and then I compare those odds across books because then you really find the plays that jump to the top. And this is one that right off the get-go, I have more like towards 14 and a half, 14, which generally would be a lock, but you got to be careful with some of these double-digit spreads. And I've talked about this in the past, not so much this season because it's been a little bit better, and I've actually shied away from some of these double-digit spreads, but it's really hard for me to go about projecting blowouts. It's always been the case. I come from a DFS background, that being Daily Fantasy Sports, where you're projecting player performance and you're looking at player props primarily. And that was the primary avenue of diving into sports betting to begin with. But part of that is that it's so hard to be able to tell when blowouts are coming, but it is very easy to tell when there is value hanging on the branch in this kind of style, mainly because if Chicago plays well, you're looking at a spot where, oh, okay, well, now they bring in their reserves, Boston brings in their reserves, and you have to be able to compare what those reserves look like. But when we're talking about the starters specifically, and we start to see some type of value that exists on a team like Boston, it's just way better with their starting unit, plus 8.4 adjusted net unit. Like, that is ridiculous stuff over at Dunks and Threes right from the get-go. Chicago, minus 3.4. There's actually a huge gap 
between Chicago, which is the eighth worst team in the projection basis, and the ninth best team being Toronto, there's nearly a three adjusted net difference between the two, which might not sound like anything to you, but let me tell you, that's a lot. It's kind of a chasm when you're talking about modeling of specific teams. And part of that is guys like Alex Caruso, who are valuable. He entered this game questionable, and that becomes minutes instead of a good defender like Alex Caruso, that ends up being a porous defender like an Ayo DeSumo or a Javon Carter. Also not as offensively inclined as Alex Caruso, although you go through some of his shooting splits this season, only attempted 15 threes or something like that, or 35 threes at home. So what that 50 threes, and it's a whole thing. Carry the one, there you go. But he's shooting 48% from three is what I'm getting at, 57% from the field. One of the more undervalued players in the NBA compared to like what... Look at the Lakers. The Lakers would kill to have Alex Caruso on their roster in its current construction right now because he is such an elite defender. And you bring those kind of shooting splits to the forefront. There's a reason him and KCP, yeah, you know me, helped lead that bubble team. We want to call it a Mickey Mouse title, whatever else, to the forefront. But this is really all about Boston here. You have Zach Levine on the Chicago side. He's questionable, but that doesn't really matter as much to me as Drew Holiday being questionable because Drew Holiday is a valuable winning basketball player. You have Derek White, who's probable, so that's always a good thing to be seeing. And then Kristaps Porzingis, we already know is out, but yet 11 and a half for the spread. Here is why. Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown confirmed really good basketball players and when you start looking at DeMar DeRozan versus either of them just because I kind of did it as an exercise you see just how much better they are there's a reason that Boston is favored by 11 and a half here in this spot and I would argue it's not enough you have news that could break where if Alex Caruso's out I find that to be the most winning basketball player on the Chicago side in terms of EPM like that's ridiculous to say out loud he doesn't have the flash of a Levine he doesn't have the luster of a DeMar DeRozan, and he doesn't have the stat padding of Nikola Vucevic. But Boston should be bigger favorites, 11 and a half, like it. We carry on our merry way. Kind of briefly talked about Toronto there a second ago, going up against Brooklyn here in this spot, and kind of a confusing game for me to get a grasp of exactly what I want to do here. Camp Thomas, he was upgraded to doubtful, which is a weird thing to go from like, out to doubtful normally you go from like out to questionable and then you get downgraded to doubtful later but cam thomas showing up on the injury report as doubtful nick claxton he's questionable cam johnson he's probable and cam johnson was the guy that i was kind of the most worried about from the from the brooklyn side mainly because he matters a lot nick claxton matters to a certain extent as well but you get certain pieces like a dorian finney smith where they can go small ball uh if they really want to go to dayron sharp do 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 like they did against chicago 27 minutes of him there made sense for the matchup considering it was vucevic on the other side but overall you start playing this game out a bunch of times and the pace that's obviously going to take a major major hit anytime a team is playing Toronto they're sitting down there in the bottom third of the league sitting at 21st in pace 98.7 possessions per 48 and then you start talking about Brooklyn on the other side we know that they're not exactly going to go completely breakneck speed anytime soon but you know be nice for them to get Ben Simmons back into the fray they're sitting at 22nd there 98.3 possessions does that create enough for us to be able to go to Dennis Schroeder? I don't know because we don't have props available for this one yet. Dennis Schroeder, uh, well, he should be good to go, even though he got dinged up last game, only played 29 minutes. He also got in foul trouble. Everything went against him, and he almost, still almost went over that 21 and a half. But he had hit it in three consecutive. Not that that's something that matters to me because this game, we better be getting better than 20 and a half on his points plus assists or 22 and a half on his points plus rebounds plus assists. Again, rebounding rate going to take a substantial hit as Yaka Pertl is playing more, as you have Scotty Barnes holding onto the ball a lot more here. Ben, one of the better players in the NBA relative to expectations this season. He pretty took a pretty noticeable jump here. 19 points per game, 9.1 rebounds per game. That is eye-popping. And 5.6 assists per game. Pretty solid repertoire, pretty well-rounded. But Dennis Schroeder, over on something, probably. I don't know. That's just what I put there listed. And then Toronto money line. This is the other side of this thing where it's plus money to possibly have a very small Toronto team that has to handle a Jakob Pertle in the middle, who's also a winning basketball player. I feel like I'm just like isolating my favorite guys who are actually just good, solid plus minus guys in these early games talking through the analysis. But Dennis Schroeder, something 
If you want to know if I fire anything up here, again, prize picks underdog, that's going to be uh, some different questions because there's a different map that goes into it. And I know a lot of you have been asking me those questions lately, which I love, 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 love. But then a shorter over something is going to make sense more than likely in this spot. And then Toronto Moneyline. Plus 110 here without Claxton would be really, really tasty. We got Atlanta, we got Cleveland, and, uh, well, player props. Let's have a conversation, shall we? Because there was a under that was very, very noticeable from about a week ago now. Harrison Barnes, under 11 and a half. That was what I had on the card. It ends up being a lock. And what happens? Keegan Murray ends up getting downgraded to doubtful and ruled out of that game after my analysis. So, one. You need to look at context yourself. I can't predict injury reports that pop up out of nowhere. Now, Keegan Murray, he's also been ground downgraded to doubtful before this program started. Thank you to that. We'll talk about that when we get to the one lock that is on the card here. But as I look at Atlanta and Cleveland here, there's a player specifically that I think is a little bit overprojected. I'm going to actually start on the Cleveland side of things first. Nice to see Donovan Mitchell, Darius Garland suiting up next to each other yet again. A team that was extremely, extremely downtrodden and beat up and had everybody hurt. Whether it was Jared Allen to start the season, that Donovan Mitchell has a hamstring, and Evan Mobley, he's been healthy throughout. But... You got Dean Wade is the only guy who's out that matters to this rotation. Ty Jerome has not played a game yet. Ricky Ruby hasn't played a game forever, although my dad can't wait for him to get back and play. He Maybe he'll watch some Cleveland bat. No, he probably won't. Go Timberwolves. But Dean Wade, only guy who matters that's out in this rotation. I think that just creates an opportunity where Donovan Mitchell, you get more time on the floor. You got to expect more offensive output on both sides because, again, he's not a positive defender. But yet, DeJounte Murray, 18 and a half points. And I was a little bit stunned to see this on the card. But this is kind of what I think is going on with some of the modeling process in this spot. I think you're looking at pace being down relative to other Atlanta games. That, I think, is the very obvious thing. You get Cleveland out there. They're not playing inside of the top 15 in the NBA, sitting right on that cutoff. 17th in the NBA in terms of pace. But... The defensive rating with Jared Allen has continued to get better and better. Last season, you know how good they were. They were one of the best teams in the NBA throughout. In fact, number one in adjusted defensive rating at dunksandthrees.com. Can't cannot recommend them enough when you're trying to model out your own stuff, piece together things. But 110.4, really, really good stuff by a near point over Memphis. And huh, Memphis, far cry from what they used to be. But they're sitting at fourth now in adjusted defensive rating after being closer to 10th. And that is just the Jared Allen playing next to Evan Mobley for more minutes effect. When you see them on the floor together, you definitely know you're getting better defense than when you had Dean frickin Wade playing alongside an Evan Mobley playing at the five or when they went to some of these other weird constructs and it was Tristan Thompson or, you know, I guess Damian Jones, not really Damian who? Damian Jones, who? Damian Jones. Yeah, he doesn't really play it at all. But Tristan Thompson did have a couple of spots where he was playing mid-teens minutes throughout the season in the absence of Jared Allen. Not really necessary here at this point, although he plays some backup center minutes. We saw eight minutes against Toronto, 12 against Miami. Either way, Tristan Thompson is not remotely close to Jared Allen in terms of defensive presence. So at the rim, that is going to be where DeJounte Murray ends up being somebody who struggles a little bit more. And I think that what ends up happening in these kind of spots is people over project because they love to bet overs and they don't necessarily look at how many shot attempts you have from a specific spot or what the effective field goal percentage is. And that is where he struggles. 51.5% effective field goal percentage, 31st percentile in the NBA, just a 55.2% true shooting percentage, and only 52.6% of his shots going down at the rim. Being a little bit more complacent to shoot threes. And guess what? Shooting threes throughout his career, never been the calling card. Career under a 35% shooter. Last season, 34.4% in his first season alongside Trey Young. So 18 and a half. Much as it sounds crazy, as long as there isn't some random injury news on a Trey Young or a Bojan Bogdanovic. Uh, oh. Almost said our other Bogdanovich. Sorry, Bogdan Bogdanovich. Just saying, pay attention. I like the under here of 18 and a half points. Whew, a lot of talk just for a like, but thought we would at least talk that one out together because I think unders, when I recommend them on these cards going forward, need that context. You have to remember, I don't predict the injuries going forward. And overs, well, if the player that it is that's over ends up sitting out, well, they'll be affected by the fact that it's just voided.
All right, this is an under that doesn't need any context. Milwaukee minus three going up against Miami. That's not going to be what we go out of our way to pick on. And I will say, I thought about making a like play here, and it's right on the cusp between lean and like going towards Milwaukee minus three. But of course, you got some questionable tags that are existing just about everywhere. Jimmy Butler, questionable for this one. Duncan Robinson now upgraded to probable. That's good stuff. And Chris Middleton with an Achilles issue that popped up out of nowhere, questionable. If you end up having Chris Middleton sit and you have to have those minutes replaced by anybody, yeah, Jay Crowder continues to be out for them as well. But if you have to get those minutes replaced by anybody, it is a difficult ask to have Milwaukee minus three here on the card. And if Jimmy Butler plays, well, you're not getting any kind of profile, positive profile there whatsoever. But Bam at a bio here, another one of those guys who, well, if you're going to play through him instead of Jimmy Butler, I like the under for it. Somebody who in the half court is going to set the offense. A very underrated passer. I don't know how many times I can say that over the course of a, a season of basketball, but I you'll probably hear it at least another 20 times because he is that guy. Yeah, Kyle Lowry has absolutely diminished his assist rate and then playing through Jamie Butler and Tyler Hero continues to be out. And you know what I'm getting at, but I'm looking at the under of this game in general, 226 and a half. As you look at Milwaukee as they're currently constructed, I think there's going to need to be some shuffling of pieces, mainly because I don't know if Bobby Portis fits on this team as they want to right now. And they're going to try to play up in pace, fifth in the NBA here. I'm not sure that that's going to be something that is out. Like Damian Lillard and Giannis and Tedekumpo, you want to just surround them with as much shooting as possible. So if Chris Middleton ends up being out, you replace it with a Pat Connaughton, with a Malik Beasley, who is known as the shooter. He's a 45.5% three-point shooter. Those are the kind of guys that you want surrounding them constantly. And then off the bench, you just want dudes who are knockdown shooters. And that's not going to be what you get from a Bobby Portis. 32.6% from three over the course of this season. Just throwing it out there. But Miami is going to slow this down considerably compared to what is projected. And what's projected is just way too damn high. 97.7 possessions per 48 minutes here for the Miami Heat. They're playing at home. You give a little bit of a bump there. 226 and a half, especially if Middleton ends up being out. This is going to close at 225, 224. And I know everybody hit the panic button. Oh, Eric, this dropped a point or two points there. Work got Portland 81 and 77 here, 240 in the third. Maybe a little sweaty here on the over of 240, 240 and a half, but still feeling good about this. Feel Pretty good about this one under 226 and a half. But again, gets the like, not the lock. This gets a definite lock, friends. My BetMGM promotion we got going right now. You can claim up to $1,500 in bonus bets at the link below. Now, the offers vary from state to state. And as somebody who's going to be hopping from Scottsdale to Las Vegas, and I'm going to be all over the map here the next couple of days. Looking forward to just hop, skip, and a jump away. I'm excited to take advantage of BetMGM stuff in different states. Again, I've already done it in arizona and nevada obviously but if you go to other states or if you're traveling around sign up at the different portions of betmgm and get this promotion in multiple ways again betmgm available state to state basis and i will say the app is completely different as you jump from state to state so just want to throw that out as well for anybody who isn't informed about the betmgm and how it works now it's one of the most reputable sports books that exists in america period end of story your DraftKings, your fan duels i would put it betmgm is maybe third in the pecking order there. Caesars, they're pretty good at projecting some of their numbers from time to time. It just completely depends which state you're in, friends. But BetMGM, love the product. And, well, shit, you're going to get two months of the Odd Shopper Tools plus Discord access just by trying out BetMGM. Again, $10 or more, you fire it up there over at BetMGM. Claim your bonus bets, and it will vary from state to state. But most importantly, when you check out BetMGM and bet anything there, you're going to get yourself two months of Odd Chopper Tools plus Discord access. Only if you're 21 and over, 18 and over in Kentucky. And if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Jacob didn't like this pick. Producer Jacob said, this pick is dusty, Eric. This pick is terrible. This is a terrible, terrible pick, is what Charles Barkley would say. And also, what sad, dusty producer Jacob would say, even though he's like 10 years younger than me. Who cares? It's all right. Keep talking to yourself. Nobody can hear you. It's fine. Don't you dare interrupt me here because I'm rolling and I need to go watch my Vikings. But... We are going to break this one down a little bit, not nearly as in-depth as uh, we did with the DeJounte Murray one, mainly because anything is possible when it comes to the Charlotte Hornets in terms of pace. And, well, there's a couple of injury pieces that are happening that make me very, very, very interested in some overs. Now, 
you know my fondness of double digit spreads. I Charlotte 11 and a half. I think the news is kind of baked into this number. Lonzo Ball. Sorry, I said Lonzo. That's rip. Rip to Lonzo. Where's he been? He used to be one of my favorites. Kind of was like mini dream on green shot with a backpack, but better shooter, obviously. And then like did all the dirty work. I don't want the two yo dirty work. Oh yeah. Boom, 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 boom. LaMelo ball is who I was getting at. He is doubtful for this game on Tuesday in the garden. That said, oh, womp, 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 womp. well, what you can do is you can use on off court tools and you can look at how somebody's usage is affected by somebody being on a floor and somebody being off the floor. And wouldn't you know it, Gordon Hayward, just like everybody would expect, ends up jumping from around a 20 and a half usage guy to around a 22% usage guy. That creates more opportunities to shoot. And if this game gets wonky, you're probably dead already. But again, this is where you run into those blowout scenarios, and there's games where this blows out, and Gordon Hayward still goes over his points prop. There's games where this doesn't shoot out, and he goes under it. But the usage, the opportunity, that's what I can project. And yes, Terry Rozier is back in the fray, not the band. Nobody likes that band for the most part, but he had his first game in a long time, three weeks off, ends up playing against Orlando, played 37 minutes right from the get-go. <laughs> Way to be cautious with those minutes. Way to go, team. Good job, good effort. And yes, Brandon Miller, who got dinged up last time they went to the Garden. I only know because I was in Manhattan and I almost went to the game. And it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. But yeah, Gordon Hayward. I don't understand how they land on 12 and a half points here as the number. But you're going to want yourself some more on that one. That gets a like button from me. The only reason it doesn't is, again, these wonky games with blowout potential. And there's just one better player on the card that's going to be an absolute Hulk slam. So we'll bide our time. And it's not a player prop, which is shocking to me. But Gordon Hayward over 12 and a half. I like it. Half unit. I wish I had something here. God knows I'm going to be watching this basketball game, but Oklahoma City, they've been a wagon 12-4-0 against the spread, going up against my Minnesota Timberwolves, who have been a mini wagon, but also they've been valued pretty correctly here of late because their valued is really damn good, and that's what they are. Currently third in adjusted net rating, 12-4. and four. They would have the one seed in the West if the playoffs started today. I know that it's November 28th when you're listening to this, Tuesday, November 28th, for all the aliens out there who want to know the date that I give this recommendation. Oh, yeah, it's not even a recommendation. It's just going to be a damn lean. But Chet Holmgren is that dude. He's that dude. And he's going back to Minnesota, his home state. You want to have some home state narratives here? Chet Holmgren, brethren of Minnesota, goes to Gonzaga in Washington and then ends up in a boot because he's in Seattle playing basketball with LeBron James and he has the Laws Frank injury, which is the Travis Etienne injury. And then Chet Holmgren shows up. But go through Eric's tweets and I will tell you one thing. He was a big fan of Chet Holmgren. Chet Holmgren should have been the number one pick. He will always be that guy to me. Chet Holmgren, oops daisies That's what I'll say. Chet Holmgren, just so damn good. Yeah, it's like the last dance guy. All right, producer Jacob, we're getting along again now. But as I'm looking at the board for this one, I see no prop that I'm interested in. I see nothing to dig into. 225 and a half. The Minnesota Timberwolves, they've had half of their games out of 16 of them that they've played where they have held opponents under 40% shooting and under 30% three-point shooting. You know how many other teams have done that this season? I can't remember. All I know is that they lead the NBA here in that category. Eight of 16. There's four teams that haven't done it, period. I do know that. I can't remember how many have actually done that. I think more than a couple. Anyway, it's really bad shooting, and it's really good defense. And even though they don't have McDaniels out there, Rip City, it would be nice to get him back here sometime soon. He'll be out here for this one as well. It's a pretty healthy spot. Both teams are extremely healthy. And when you don't see injuries on either side, it is really hard to find those little extra percentage edges. And that's when the books absolutely slam you when you want to bet efficient props and efficient lines. So we're going to stay away from this one. If I had to do anything, as sad as it is, Oklahoma City plus four has like 0.2% expected value. But be the thinnest play ever. You want to go flip coins in your backyard? Go have fun doing that. I will not be betting this game unless something drastically changes in the numbers. We got two games left. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. As we talk a little Houston and Dallas, and you want to talk about pace. Neither of these teams got that. Dallas, we know that they like to play a little bit more slow, lethargic. They've been quicker. They've been quicker this year. 100.4 possessions 
per 48 minutes. That is 10th in the NBA. That is them figuring out how to make Kyrie Irving work in conjunction with Luka Doncic and friends. It was going to happen this season. And it's nice to see them start to play some winning basketball because they have the potential. 10 and 6 now on the season. And yeah, it's a bummer to see some of the injuries, specifically to uh, Mr. Derek Lively, but he ends up being questionable. Upgraded to questionable for this game. That's a big deal to me. Maxi Kleba continues to be out. He's kind of a, a stretch four more so, even though they play small ball lineups with him at the five. Derek Lively is such an upgrade over Rashawn Holmes. It's not really even that funny. It's actually not funny. I'm not even going to make a joke about it. Because there's no joke to be made. And then Alperin Shangun, you know this season, I love my dude. He's awesome. He's one of the most skilled big men in the NBA already. He has year two. This is an ascent that we're seeing. And if you didn't have the Victor Wembanyamas and the Chet Holmgrens, and he would be getting a lot more shine than what he's been. And also Houston, I don't expect them to be some amazing team, but they're eight and six right now in the West. They would be the eight seed sneaking into that eight seed right now. Obviously there's 10 teams that you know, the play in thing is still a thing, but as we're looking at this Tuesday play in tournament, Houston plus five is a little bit wide for me. And yet it's still not going to get touched by me. The one play that is, is Alperin Shengun. Over 10 and a half rebounds. Now his double-double is at minus 155 over at FanDuel. Instead of betting that and having him get to 10, why wouldn't you just take the plus 105 to take over of his rebounds prop at DraftKings? Please do your shopping. 55 cents difference between his double-double number at FanDuel and his over 10 and a half rebounds at FanDuel or at DraftKings very important plus 105 that is a phenomenal bet it's not a lock there's only one hulk slam and it's coming up next but luka Doncic, you got to throw out the artificial lean here the numbers have gotten worse and worse and worse plus 440 opening number here at FanDuel. do be careful these opening numbers if people just start betting or i recommend something and the traction starts coming in you're going to see something that isn't a very profitable bet and just because i think something might happen doesn't make it actual to happen now the luka Doncic, i have closer to plus 300 that basically is saying hey one out of every three times, you're going to see him end up putting up a triple-double and getting plus 400, plus 440, probably ends up making the card. But I think just in the nature of the fact that I already like Shangun rebounds, I've already had a couple of other props on the board here for this one. Going to tread lightly. Chill out, kick it, kick my feet up, just bet the Shangun rebounds prop. And hey, if this gets to plus 450 or plus 500 somewhere else, Luka Doncic, that will make the card. I hate to do it. I absolutely hate to do it, but this is just a phenomenal spot. The Golden State Warriors taking on the Sacramento Kings. The aforementioned, talked about them a little bit earlier as I lamented my Harrison Barnes play from days of yore that we cashed out of and then I talked to everybody in the premium Discord, got them off of. But you know what? Context beside the point. Go ahead and frame me for stuff that I can't do. Keegan Murray is doubtful. That's who I was going to talk about. Keegan Murray is doubtful for this basketball game. You know who is not doubtful for this basketball game? Draymond Green, who returns, he matters so damn much to this basketball team. It's not even funny, and it's weird to see because he's attempted 23s this season. He's 9 for 20, 45% from 3, 48.2% from the field. If he shot 45% from 3 by the end of the season without kicking other people in the dick or stomping on their faces or doing other dumb shit, well, you're going to see one of the more valuable players in the entire NBA because of what he brings on the defensive end. And it's a little bit muted this season, mainly because, you know, we don't have a huge sample size. He's played all of nine games, averaged just 22 minutes a game, got ramped up from injury, and then, you know, gets in timeout because he put, you know, he tried to sleeper choke out one Rudy Gobert. <laughs> Good for Rudy. Wasn't me. Then a shot me in the corner. Wasn't me. A little bit of that. But like, not the sex version. It's like the, the headlock version. And Rudy Gobert didn't do anything. Just wanted to have his hands up. Put my hands up. We're playing this. I'm, I've done enough singing. I apologize. But Golden State, friends, this is a Hulk slam kind of spot. And I know we saw Golden State and Sacramento play one of the more, I would say, interesting series throughout uh, the playoffs last season. It was an incredible series. That game seven, Steph Curry goes, uh, remember me? I'm Steph Curry kind of mode on Sacramento. And then it was disappointing with the Lakers series and the whole thing. And what is what it is. But as I am looking, 238 and a half, pretty efficient. Not going to be talking about that. This just comes down to how good Draymond Green is going to be on the defensive end as we accumulate sample size. Because again, get this. This is as wonky as it gets. In 2023-24, 
Draymond Green, a plus 1.6 on the offensive end, 86th percentile offensive player, negative 0.7 defensive player, 42nd percentile. He's never finished lower than 92nd percentile since add more funds has been in existence never been outside of a top 10 percentage caliber defender and in 2022 he was the top rated defender plus five plus five in terms of plus minus and expected win share when it comes to defensive players is absolutely ridiculous now last season as he gets older i mean what is he now 33 years of age i think he's 33 years of age don't fact check me or do i don't give a shit you're talking about a guy that defensively last season was still 99th percentile but it took a little bit of a dip plus three in that regard 89th percentile 7.4 expected win share but i'm just saying if they're going to run him out for 24 minutes here against sacramento it's a defensive problem for sacramento just in terms of the dribble handoff and the the opportunity he has to create for the likes of a steph curry and then on the other side for Clay Thompson, I, I guess he has a pulse again. I don't know in that change. But Chris Paul can go out and create. So now you get two playmakers on the floor who haven't shared the floor all that much this season yet. I think you want to be invested here, friends. I think Sacramento, without Keegan Murray and his shooting, and you have to play more minutes for a Malik Monk, who's all right, but like it is what it is. And then you're looking at Chris Duarte. I don't know what they're doing with his minutes. He plays eight minutes. He plays 20 minutes. He plays 33 minutes. He plays 22 minutes. It's hard to get a gauge for what he actually matters. Chris Duarte, he'll care about the Ducks on Friday. That's for sure. Quack, quack. Let's go. Sco Ducks. But in this event, Sco Warriors, friends. We're just taking the money line. Plus 110 is what's on your screen. But FanDuel currently has plus 118. Friends, that is a Hulk slam. That is beyond a unit play for me. This is going to be the spot. That I plant my flag. Yeah, give me the dog. Draymond Green going to come out with a little bit of a chip on his shoulder here. And then obviously Steph Curry, Clay Thompson knocking down shots. I mean, you're basically fading the pick and roll. De'Aaron Fox and Demonis Sabonis. And I'm willing to do that with a team that's been constructed this way forever. That gets their centralized piece, their unsung hero. Actually, he's kind of sung as a hero. He'll sing for himself. Draymond Green and the Golden State Warriors get it done for us on. Tuesday. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks. You know what to do. Go to that comment section below. Let me know your favorite plays that exist here on the board for our lovely Tuesday slate we have before us. Only eight games. Pretty chill. Pretty chill. Gonna be fun stuff, but I'm excited to be bringing you this content. Thank you so much. Again, I know it's not Thanksgiving anymore, but wanted to say uh, how much I appreciate you guys tuning in, talking through some of these plays with me week in, week out basis. You want to join me in the premium discord and talk about them in person as much as you want. Well, not in person. That'd be creepy. On the internet as much as you want. Would love to talk you through everything that I'm doing here at Stochastic, at Odd Shopper, and beyond. Really great stuff. Thank you, Producer Jacob. Let's get ourselves the heck up out of here and watch some football. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Tuesday.